Hi everyone, Bernard here. I hope you're all staying safe and well and welcome to my film and TV channel. I hope you enjoy what I've got for you today and please check out uh, as you're watching this uh, little links on screen as well for different things for my uh, Facebook and Twitter and of course my uh, football channel as well. And, uh, please all your comments are very welcome. Just let us know and push that subscribe button. Don't forget, please push the subscribe button. Make sure your notification is set to public as well if you want to know when uh, these vlogs are coming out. Push that notification button as well. So, anyway, please, please enjoy. Right, today we're going to take a look at a film called 12 Mighty Orphans. Yes, 118 minutes long, so almost two hours. Historic drama sports film directed by Ty Roberts from a screenplay by Roberts himself, Lane Garrison and Kevin Mayer. It's based upon the non-fiction book, Get 12 Mighty Orphans, the inspiring true story of the Mighty Mites who rule Texas football. It's by Jim Dent. Starring Luke Wilson, Vanessa Shaw, Wayne Knight, Jake Austin Walker, Jacob Laughlin, Levi Dillon, Robert Duval and Martin Sheen. So quite a good cast, young and old, of course. Uh, 12 Mighty Orphans tells a true story of the Mighty Mites, the football team of a Fort Worth orphanage who during the Great Depression went from playing without shoes or even a football to playing for the Texas State Championships. Over the course of their winning season, these underdogs and their resilient spirit became an inspiration to their city, state and an entire nation in need of a rebound, even catching the attention of President Franklin D. Roosevelt. The architect of their success was Rusty Russell, a legendary high school coach who shocked his colleagues by giving up a privileged position so he could teach and coach at an orphanage. Yeah, I think this guy was an orphan himself, so obviously had a sort of uh, leaning towards that. How's it doing? How's it rating? Well, interestingly enough, uh, not great, actually, for this sort of film. Rotten Tomatoes, it's OK. It's got a 63% positivity rate, which is OK. Nothing wrong with that. 84 reviews. Uh, just just averaging 6 out of 10, just, just that magical 6 out of 10 mark I always look for. But uh, of the actual freshies and rottens, it's got 53 fresh and 31 rotten, so quite a sizable chunk of rottens. One of the rottens was Adam Graham from Det Detroit News. He said, try so hard to be inspirational that it trips itself up on its way out to the field. A great story, but the telling is second string. But we do have fresh there in the majority, aren't they? Noel Murray from the LA Times wrote, Nothing that happens in this film is unexpected, but these two pros still react with infectious wonder as the messages they send to their students take root and then sprout. Randy Mayers from the uh, San Jose Mercury News. If you're looking for an old-fashioned sports drama, this is it. Yet the consensus reads, 12 Mighty Orphans will rouse faithful fans of old-fashioned inspirational sport dramas, but the Tiger audience has seen this sort of thing done more effectively before. Probably correct in that, that's probably why it's been marked down. But the Rotten Tomato audience, well, this is Joe Public that go and watch this. Uh, 9.4 out of 10, so there you go. Slight discrepancy to the uh, critics and the public with this one. Better critic, the other critic site, yeah, but even worse than Rotten Tomatoes. They're only going to score this on average of 44 out of 100. That's based on only 14 critics, 1, 4, 14 critics. And it scores anywhere between 20 and 70 out of 100, but there's a lot a lot of 50 and below within that as well. Uh, Screen Daily's Tim Grayson, he only scored it 40. He said, Luke Wilson and Martin Sheen are respectably earnest as the caretakers of these blandly noble underdogs, but this sepia-tinged portrait slavishly follows the playbook at every turn, which is ironic since it's a film meant to honour a coach who won by being inventive. Interesting point. The film stages Jared Mubarak, though he preferred it a lot more. He gave it 67 out of 100 and said, The delineation between good and evil may be a bit too black and white throughout, but none of those aspects removed the potency of the lessons learned along the way. So what about Internet Movie, internet movie Database? Right, they're not as enamoured as the Rotten Tomatoes audience, Joe Public, but uh, yeah, a very, very healthy uh, after 2,103 reviews as I'm re recording this on the uh, 24th of September 2021 here in the UK, uh, 8 p.m. UK time. Uh, 2,103 scores and reviews. And of that 2,103, a massive 1,801 have scored it either six or more out of 10. That's 86% of the people leaving scores and reviews. 
and only 302 of that 2,103 scored it five or less. So pretty, pretty big vast majority for the positives on that one. So what do I think? Well, I was a bit surprised of the, can I use the word hate? There was a little bit of hate in some of the critics' words about this and didn't like it at all and thought it was very badly done. But uh, uh, that's mainly the critics. There are, there are exceptions, as there always will be, certainly on Rotten Tomatoes. Most of the critics did give it a favourable review, but as I say, there's a lot, a, lot of, uh, a lot of negativity coming from that. I mean, there's some complaints. I think you're going to get this in any sort of film where it portrays real people in not a nice way, which is uh, obviously we are, I remember many, many moons ago with the Titanic film, certain characters, obviously uh, relatives of the families, et cetera, et cetera, weren't overly impressed with how these people were portrayed. And and this is this is uh, similar with this. Obviously, it's going to upset a few people, a few groups of people and families, et cetera. Uh, certainly for the ones who didn't come out with this smelling of roses, which there are uh, certainly one or two characters uh, who don't in this. Um, that's fair enough. I mean, no doubt there is a bit of dramatic license has been used. And uh, uh, obviously, unless you're actually there and know the people, you never will really know, will you? But there you go. I've seen films, of course, you have. I think one of the critics said there, I've seen films like this many, many times. But the, all right, I'm not a big American football fan. I used to like, enjoy watching it back in the 80s, but then I soon got a little bit bored with it, to be honest with you. But uh, I do like whether it's baseball, American football, but perhaps I'll draw the line at basketball. I'm not all impressed, uh, <laughs> unless it's Space Jam or something like that. But, uh, yeah, um, I do enjoy these sort of films, that obviously, where they give you a little bit of a goosebump, give you a little bit of a tear to, to the eye, and I certainly got both of those with this one. And, yeah, Although it is uh, formulaic in line with everything else we've seen, there's nothing overly creative today in this in this one. Uh, for me, it's just it's just nice to have the underdog done good story. Is always, always a winner, especially if it's uh, based on a true event as well, which makes it even better. Of course, the characters are very watchable. We get to obviously the lead characters are mainly the older guys. You don't get perhaps to know as much about some of the orphans as you'd like to know. Obviously, at the end of the film, there's a little little story on each of what they went on to do, which is really worth watching the credits for, to be honest with you. But, uh, yeah, there's no real weaknesses in any of the acting or, or the characters on, on showing this one. As I say, there's the, the goodies we stick up for and the baddies we don't, you know, we, we want to boob, and that's just how it should be with these sort of films. And I can certainly live with watching one of these one or two of these style of films a year, it, it does does you good to watch this sort of film. It uplifts you and makes you feel a little bit better about yourself and a little bit better about humanity at times. Uh, so that's, you know, there's always room for that in my mind. Yes, that is nothing special. It's nothing different to what we've seen before. But uh, given obvious budget limitations with films of this type, uh, I was quite happy with it. I thought it was very good. I think to be un you know, unfairly critical is a little bit unfair. I just I just don't think it deserves the criticism it gets from uh, certainly many of the critics. Uh, as I said, most of the public did seem to like it, and I'm a member of the public, and I liked it. So I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 which for me is a good a good watch. Yeah, I, got, I got me watchable, which is six. Very watchable is seven, but a good watch is a seven out of ten. So this film gets that. This is uh, currently on as I'm recording this. Uh, just started a little run at the UK cinema, so obviously it should soon be on DVD or Blu-ray in the next few weeks. So uh, keep your eyes out for that. And if you've seen it and you like it, let me know what you think. Anyway, am I, am I correct? Are the critics wrong on this one? Just let me know. Anyway, thanks for watching. We're going to do the rest of the day. Have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. More important, let's all look after each other. So we meet here again on the Film and TV channel, or perhaps if you have a flit across, have if you enjoy uh, English, UK, European football, uh, not American football. If you if you enjoy if you enjoy our our Premier League, etc., please watch my Citizen channel where I have a look at uh, all things Manchester City, my team. Uh, if not, if you enjoy your film and TV stuff, I'll meet you back here for something else very very soon. All I ask, please stay, stay safe. Just stay safe out there, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.